Welcome, ladies and gents. I'm Dan the Man Munoz, host of Movie Many Reviews, your weekly movie news and reviews uh, podcast. Uh, <laughs> I had to uh, think about it for a moment. Podcast. <laughs> w- were you unsure about that? Yeah. We've only been doing this for how many years now? Uh, too long. Too long. <laughs> but uh, we have a great show ahead of you as we were doing a spoiler free review of Spider Man Homecoming. I am joined by special correspondent Rigo Espinosa. Rigo. Hey guys, hey, what's going on? Thank you Rigo? for being on the show, Rigo. No problem. Also here is our co-host and senior panelist, Z. Hey. Put your hands up, Z, so hey. people know who you are. Right here. Hi, how's it going? I'm right here. And also here is my co-host, Mike Stay. Hey. 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 I'm here. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and review... Spider-Man Homecoming, but before we do that, I just need to take a look at some stuff real quick. Shouldn't that have been the first thing to do? Hey, Mike, edit this part out. <laughs> we couldn't do this first because we weren't live, but now we are oh, live. So we're doing a live test right now. So, yay. To, to make sure uh, there's actual video. <laughs> oh, we're doing an li- actual audio. Live and test audio, on yeah. live. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the review. Spoiler free, I should say. Uh, to Spider-Man Homecoming, directed by John Ro- Watts. It is written by Jonathan Goldstein, John Francis Daly, John Voted. based yes. on the characters of Stanley and Steve Ditko. All right, here's the plot. Several months after the events of Captain America: Civil War, Peter Parker, with the help of his mentor Tony Stark, tries to balance his life as an ordinary high school student in Queens, New York, while fighting crime as a superhero alter ego, Spider-Man. As a new threat, the vulture emerges. It stars Tom Holland, Michael Keaton, Robert Downey Jr., Marissa Tomei, John Favreau, Zendaya, Donna Glover, Jacob Batalon, Laura Harrier, and Tony Revolori. All right, guys, we have all seen this film. We've all seen it. So we shall unanimously decide if this movie's worth a dine in, watch it in theaters, wait, uh, take out, wait and watch it at home, or leftovers. Uh, get bit by radar to spider and just get cancer. Get cancer and die, <laughs> <laughs> or some type of disease. Not cancer, cause fuck cancer. Yes, also fuck cancer. Um, all right, so I guess we will decide if we get points or not, or you guys can decide who earns the points. Um, and yeah, then I, whoever has the most point at the end of the season will get to pick a segment of their own choosing. That should air sometime next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. 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 I can All right. Take, take six months per. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. All right. As our special correspondent, Rigo, you can go ahead and keep your point or give it away if you happen to earn one today. I don't have any points. You've been giving them all away. That's why. I yeah. know, because I'm the movie menu Chris Kringle. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas every time he goes on the show. <laughs> That's why you bring your own. <laughs> On that note, Rigo, uh, go ahead and give your first rating. Oh, my God. This is so difficult. Is it, though? Uh, I was very conflicted about it. Really? Uh, I'm going to have to say, surprisingly, a dine-in. Surprisingly, a surprisingly. dine-in. Yeah. Were you not going to give it a dine-in? No. Was, I, is it a week? I, I always was going to give it a dine-in. Are you trying to be funny? Yeah. Are you trying to be Z or me? No, that's more of a Dan thing. So you're giving it a week dine-in or are you giving it a no, no, uh, hard there, dine-in? I'm not. You know, with this whole thing. <laughs> 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 Let me just talk about that. It's kind of weird. Because... Like, 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 when when you guys say a soft or a hard dine, I, know, I imagine so confusing. Some, <laughs> I imagine some dirty things in my mind that I'm like. <laughs> I think me and Mike do it for for that reason alone because okay. we know you watched it or listened to us in the shower, so we're just trying to give you naughty thoughts. <laughs> you yeah, can't watch this in the shower. I, I mean, no, he I can. He can if he wants to. <laughs> okay, let's not talk about that right now. But no, it's a, it's a, I, it was just a, a dine in, pre like. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, hard punch, punch dine in. Okay, yeah. hard punch dine in. Dine- one, one punch dine in. Mike. Dining. Z? Uh, it's strange. I'm going to give it a, a dine in, but I would say it's probably a soft dine in for me. Uh, here we go. Just, just go. <laughs> Let's just roll the eyes at Z right now. <laughs> Can you do it? Uh, that was a very dramatic rolly <laughs> eye thing. <laughs> All right, Dan. Talk to the hands. We'll give you a because day, it's yeah. a dine in All for right. me. Wow, you finally actually got out of your grumpy chair, huh? Uh, I I had given last week's movie a dine in. No, but, but you were so negative. Uh, negative. I was not it. negative. I just pointed out the things that were wrong with the movie. Sorry for actually doing my job and reviewing the movie. Yeah, I hear you. No, and I'm I'm again. I am grateful because I, at least you're being more critical about films that we can generally 
just say like, "Oh my god, it's uh, it's amazing." But in reality, there are issues. It's okay, we we take turns being the bad guy. We, You've we, been the bad guy for the past three years. We did. I can take, <laughs> I can take a couple episodes for one episode. <laughs> so it's my turn to take the reins back and say that there are problems in this film. No, no, I agree. There are problems. In yeah, this movie. there were. There are. But yeah. the good outweighs the bad well, big time can i can i just start off with the most obvious because this is like not even part of the movie this, well we're this going is, spoiler free remember yeah you know no this is a pre film watching experience issue with this film the trailers have ruined this film for me i was watching this movie and i was like oh yeah this this is this is this is really fun i'm enjoying it. i'm getting into like the the head of peter parker and then it sets up a joke but guess what the trailer ruins the punchline and a lot of time and this an entire movie i mean the movie's not that long it's two hours so thank goodness for that but every joke every joke in the film was ruined by the trailer and uh false uh, no i did big false mostly all no. the big laughs were ruined no it wasn't no not even close yep. what are you talking about yep. i'm i'm serious about that i'm gonna have to agree with z thank on you Rigo. a lot a lot of the punchlines i was like oh that's a punchline for that or oh i've seen him do that yeah 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 it was it was sad like i just this felt was, this, so underwhelmed by that this was the type of movie where it was like guardians of the galaxy where there was jokes after minute each minute there was a different joke how can it be spoiled for, if for a 30 second trailer or a two minute trailer I, for a, that's there was a like fantastic two, question dan but they managed two, to do it no they, they managed to ruin it because of the trailers every single joke was ruined and n not every joke okay i would say probably 60 percent of the movie was ruined for me and i was hoping that like gardens of the galaxy in the trailers in the gardens of the galaxy the jokes for some reason most of them ended around like the the two-thirds mark so they didn't ruin the final part of the movie i didn't really understand or didn't know going into the movie that was going to deal with ego and i don't want to spoil the movie for you but that entire storyline i didn't know anything about that for oh, spider-man i knew everything because the trailer had preemptively spoiled no it way. For me. there was one huge reveal in this movie and you can't even say that you knew it was going to happen sure and we'll talk about it during the spoilers section but for most for, for my beginning critique i think the, the trailer just ruined this film um otherwise than that it was interesting. It was a very interesting take. For me, when I wa finished watching it, my only thought was, hey, this is Deadpool for kids. In the sense that there was well, a lot Spider -Man. of- that's Spider-Man. Yeah, exa exactly. Mm -hmm. I literally was like, if they ever crossed universe, they could totally be buddies. And well, that's why <laughs> Deadpool has the biggest man crush on Peter Parker. Except, you know, Peter Parker is 15 years old. Yeah. So <laughs> well, that'd be kind of creepy now. Well, that's well, Deadpool. He's they, creepy. Yeah. But I, I think what, I think what uh, Z's trying to say is that not that you're right, Dan. Not all the jokes were like uh, put in the trailer, but he's trying to say that all the major jokes. Yeah, like, I, would I say disagree like, too, though, because like there was seventy five percent of there the were major parts where, jokes were where were let's in go trailer. into Zendaya's character. A lot of her parts, they only showed one part in the trailer of Zendaya. She was in in this movie quite a bit, and her parts were always funny. Yes, you're right. There, there, there are several sequences in which she's in there that I that stood out for me as like really funny and quirky but what i'm saying is this okay uh and i'll talk about the most the the clearest one that everybody in the audience has probably watched it's a scene where spider-man gets into his bedroom he drops down and behind him is his best buddy and then he drops a death star that entire sequence is in the trailer and that would have i would have laughed harder had i not seen it previously no but i feel like that actor does such a great job pulling the momentum of that one joke into the whole movie there's constantly like he's asking these questions that are ridiculous and silly. Yeah. And his reactions to Peter Parker and how he has the powers is genuine. It's awesome. And it's hilarious. Yeah, it's it's absolutely genuine. And you know what? Quite literally, I feel like more more of the film should have been focused on his character and, and exploring that because. No, they do a perfect. Like they, they, they do. He, good. he explains yeah. his character right, right off the bat. I don't want to give it away, but he basically gives us his character he does he does and i in really the most best and funniest way possible yeah <laughs> because i want to be him and, and in a big way i feel like the audience now, is him now let me wait they who mean, do they want to be they i don't want they want to be the friend the, oh okay okay well I, it's like spider-man or friend. one thing that that um going into this movie that i heard a lot about is it's going to be like um john hughes type of yeah of superhero movie and, and they was. accomplished it tom they holland, accomplished yeah it. tom holland was the one you saying that this movie was going to be a lot of John Hughes uh, type of Even stuff. Even the the homecoming dance. This is not a spoiler, but the homecoming dance is an '80s theme. Oh, it might be a spoiler because well, people be. people might not know that in fact there there is actually a homecoming. In yeah, the film. that's why the movie's called Spider Man Homecoming. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But um, uh, Mike, what do you think? 
I enjoyed it. I I agree with Dan. I don't think all the jokes were ruined in the film. Yay! So, and I <laughs> yes, um, yes, there are, uh, some of the jokes in the film did lose its power from the trailer, but but there's definitely way more humor in this that you or just there's a lot of things in this film that you don't expect, and even the jokes that have ruined that were ruined by the trailer. Um, they continue to milk the joke in a good way, and I think it's really funny. Uh, I, I, by the end of the film, I was completely satisfied with how they handled everything. I also, another, wait, another thing real quick. I saw this movie in IMAX 3D, and the IMAX intro, you know how they do a countdown, and then like it becomes 3D? Sure. It was, the, it was so cool because it, was, it became Spider-Man's perspective. So as it's counting down uh-huh. eight, he's shooting the webs through the huh. numbers, and he's going through the city as... It's counting down. Just want to say that if you watch IMAX, that's an enjoyable oh, part. Oh, good grief. It, stop taking money from IMAX, Dan. <laughs> it's great. My, my head hurts already. Just give me money. Good grief. That, that was like a bit of a circle jerk. Okay, so. <laughs> Matinee. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's worth it. So the humor. The humor about this film, I think, is probably the best part. I Again, I think that there's a lot of things were ruined by the trailers, but the humor in general, they got it right. Uh, I was a big Spider-Man fan growing up. I love the comic books. I love the darkness of the comic books that I feel like the earlier remakes and reboots uh, didn't do it justice. And I feel like going in this direction was the right way because Spider-Man is a smart ass. And I feel like Tom Holland really, really nailed that. And even at that, there are moments in the film where, you know, as a fan, you know, you question things like, well, where's Spider-Man shooting at? Like, how is he like swinging from thing to thing? That they answered the question. They answered the question. <laughs> they answered. I mean, there's an entire sequence in this movie where you're just kind of like, really? Spider-Man? You would do that? You uh, Okay. I mean, hey, you know, and he yells out, this sucks. And you're just kind of like, yeah, okay. Uh, that's, that's Spider-Man for me. The humor in this film is exactly what you want. The fact that it's awkward and teenager uh, oriented, I think is probably the best part of the film. And in fact, I also felt very awkward in reminiscing experiences from high school because the film did it justice. And so I think that the they were trying their best to make a high school film. They managed that. I see that the writers in the film, uh, it was it John, John Francis Daly, uh, he's a guy from Freaks and Geeks, so clearly he had a lot of input in, you know, putting that in there. Which would make sense why Modern Stars in the movie. Yeah, the also, future. yeah, exactly. But hold on real quick. We have some people who have joined. Uh, we've had Brittany Jade, Amara Cineros. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, Mauricio Segado. Hi. Hi. Hey. And Vicente. Hi. Hey, Vicente. Let us know if you're in there. Do you agree with Rigo and I, or do you agree with the losers over there? <laughs> you talking also, about yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always. Also, also <laughs> uh, let me uh, say this about this movie. Thank God, and finally, no more Uncle Ben, ben dead. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. I was like, okay, I've, I went back and watched all Spider-Man movies before watching this one just to get a refresher course. But, <laughs> geez, I was so relieved. Like, I didn't have to live through that anymore. I hope we never have to live through that again. Well, we just might because, in fact, that's, that's something that Sony, uh, when they bought the contract from Marvel, in order for them to keep making films, they would need to keep including Uncle Ben's death. Uh, you're right. This movie miss- is completely losing that entire aspect. There are some... Um, I don't. I don't think that's. Yeah, that's it. True. No, that's actually completely true. That was. Uh, I, I believe well, Sony. We'll, we'll fact check. We'll fact check. No, you it fact, is true. You fact check. I've me. heard that. Yeah. No. Yeah. You've heard. I'm sure. So, but, but I've heard Marvel it. is the one that's able to team up with this. So this is exactly. part of their contract. Exactly. Yeah. So this still goes to their film rights as one of the movies they made. They, that's definitely true. But with partnership with Marvel, that allows them to just simply skip that, which is good because the, again, the problem with the the Raimi films and the web films were that that they just they were too dark and you would love seeing uh, Spider-Man is not Batman. You don't need that much darkness in the Spider-Man films. This, the darkness comes from the fact that Spider-Man is poor and it's funny. And that's the joke. The joke has always been that Spider-Man is always the guy on the street trying to figure things out. And I think this film actually did it. The other omission from this poor. Film, he lives in a pretty nice house. <laughs> you're right. Well, <laughs> typically he, he's poor. He typically he's poor. poor. Um, the other omission from this is that there's no Spidey sense. 
Yeah, there's no real. There's yeah. absolutely no spy. I, I had to like really kind of like think about it. I was like, whoa, there was no Spidey sense at all. I think the Spidey sense was more the suit, but even so, it completely skipped over that and said, oh, whatever. Or oh, if he had Spider senses, we didn't as the audience see it. We did not see it. You're right. Yeah. So there was a lot of good drops. I feel like the, in the, in that they just. Well, no, I like the Spider senses part, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I I can do without. Well, they he's kept, still they kept learning the, though. He's oh. learning all his stuff. He's exactly. His, so maybe he hasn't really developed Spidey sense yet. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe for the next film or maybe. Yeah. or maybe they just wanted to mainly focus on the suit in this movie so they took that away so they can you know have karen be the karen be in the suit yeah um have the have that senses. be the thing yeah and yeah. I, and i think by removing that it get again the focus of this film and i feel like this needs to be stated very clearly because i feel like the last films didn't give it justice is that Peter Parker is the man in the street. He's just a normal dude who happened to have gotten the Spider-Man powers. Uh, he's not Captain America. He's not Iron Man. He's not any of those big characters. He is just literally a dude. And because of that, that gives him the options to see the world differently. There's no privilege in the way he's perceiving things. Yes, he's really, really smart, but that's about it, really. And it's a different perspective, and it makes it even better because in this film, it makes a very good joke about it that he is called Spider Man, but he's a kid. He's a really like, and I, uh, there's a really funny sequence where the one guy's like, like, I thought you were a girl. He's like, I'm not a girl. <laughs> like, I'm a boy. I'm, I'm a man. Boy. I'm a man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think that's exactly the key thing that they focus clearly on. And the director just did a fantastic job. John Watts, which by the way, John Watts out of nowhere. This guy has not done a lot of good films. The last one he did was Cop Car, and nobody watched that. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that he managed to direct this film, either there was a lot of hand-holding going on, or he just is a good director who didn't have the opportunity to. So good job for him. He is uh, more than likely going to make the second film. Hopefully. Now let's go on. So we all are praising Tom Holland as Spider-Man. He's, he did such a great job. But let's go into uh, Michael Keaton, who is the villain. Of this movie, playing the vulture. Yes. What did you guys think of Michael Keaton? I really enjoyed Michael Keaton. I think I'm happy to see him in as a villain. It's I don't know, like I, f I think he really, really enjoyed that, <laughs> and I think it, I think it just comes off screen. I think that this movie did a great job with the villain. Yeah, yes. I in, think in the a one way thing the Marvel yep, movies yep. were lacking because holy shit, Michael Keaton is scary. Yes, yeah, he is yeah. very scary as a villain. Yeah. yeah, and more importantly, uh, I don't think this is a spoiler, but the the cold open uh, because there is a prologue to this film in the film uh, before the the Spider Man the, before the Marvel titles uh, show up. They give you his story, and you understand why he becomes a villain. There's no question about it. I feel like more than anyone in the Marvel universe, I understood his motives way more. Spider Man. Didn't really understand his motives. He's just a kid who happened to get powers, and he really, really wants to be an Avenger. But there's no real need for him to become an yeah, Avenger. Yeah, right now, right now it's like a black and white. There, yeah. To him, there was no gray, but there is gray in that life, according to Michael Keaton's yes. character. Yes, for, for Michael Keaton's character, you totally understood. He's like, I, I, need, I need to do this to, to uh, help my friends and my family. And you're like, yeah, we're totally with you. Tony Stark's an asshole, and I'm right there with you. And then, of course, you know, you start seeing him do bad things, and you're like, well, he might have gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> just a but did he really go too far? Cause well, 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 well I'm, I'm just saying, like, he during the film, kinda he, he, he kind of was kind of sympathetic, especially towards Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to give anything away, but oh, yeah. he, he had plenty of opportunities to – just end things like oh absolutely without a doubt any bad guy could have ended that story about halfway through but it was justified for him not doing that that then so. that's the thing is that that you understand his you understand his motives and less so than the stupid doctor strange villains or even at that like um the, the ego stupid, but ego yeah. was kind of like really i mean that i don't understand that you understood tombs you understood the vulture you understood why he was doing it and i think that they managed to um even at that uh make a movie that is relative to our times because we're all you know we're all in the united states guys uh those who are and we're all in a moment where we feel like we're in a struggle that character was representative of our times and more so because tony stark's um damage control damage, department damage control yeah comes in and takes his job away and you're just kind of like motherfuckers so i thought it was really good i agree so let's talk about peter parker's buddies <laughs> so 
Bef- uh, before? No, I was gonna say, what is it that that ruined it for you? Oh no, for uh, for you, Z. Oh, oh. Well, I mean, it didn't ruin it for me at all, but it's in the spoiler section. Okay. It is in the spoiler section. Okay, we'll have it, to. Wait I'm for not it. gonna say Sorry. that it's a two thirds a good movie. It's not. Okay. But it definitely well, nearly got there. Well, we'll, we'll save it for spoilers. Yes. We, okay. So uh, tune into the podcast question. for that because I will go into it. It's okay. Uh, before I was rudely interrupted by Mike, <laughs> 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 let's go ahead and talk about uh, Peter Parker's buddies. Um, what did you guys think about Ned? Uh, ne- <laughs> Ned is the best friend. It was yeah. great. It was, I, I thought that all the all the supporting cast did an, an amazing job. Yeah, I think I think it it solidifies it as that high school film. But and, oh, yeah, and how, what do you guys think about how? The ongoing joke with Aunt May is that she's super hot. That's really <laughs> funny. That was really, really funny. Now, before we get to Aunt May, though, uh, the diversity in this cast was yeah. amazing. Yeah, uh, was. There's even a moment in the film where people are talking in Spanish and you get subtitles. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. There's a there's a there's I mean, it, even at that flash, Thompson is a Hindu and you're just kind of like, cool. Like I didn't think about that. That's interesting. They they they're playing with the mythos so well and giving uh, an these, updated version yeah, that would be more you, that you really, really really. A lot of people were angry about that though. Oh well, they could be, uh, about who stuff. who isn't angry all the time on the internet about <laughs> changes and <laughs> whatnot. Especially Surprise. about the Zendaya character. I'm just saying, man. I like the Zendaya that's, that's character. Why I like the Zendaya character, That's why this too. is the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. It's not going to be the same as the comics. You know, you just. You just got to roll with the punches. But but, all, but also, like, let's face it. These films, the, the comic books were written in the, what, 1960s. There were still issues with segregation back then. So, of course, when you're trying to sell a comic book, you're not going to make the characters as diverse. I mean, that's not to say that Stan Lee did not make diverse characters. He definitely had a lot of um, people of minority in the comic books. But they were, like, really secondary characters. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe... Well, the way that he showed racism was through the X-Men. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but I think, more importantly, this film, and this should be really, really noted, it, this film is not based off of the Stanley comic at all. It's based off of the Brian Ma- Michael Bendis comic, the Ultimate Spider-Man series, because the Ultimate Spider series had this giant diversity. It, it had Miles Morales in it. So there are a lot of things in this, com- in this movie that are not actually based off of the 1960s comic books. So, you know, get off your white privilege, guys. So, <laughs> That's so, it. Speaking of which, uh, <laughs> how'd you guys feel about uh, Donald Glover in this? Oh. I, I thought it was good that he was on there because originally when Sony was going to reboot, he was going to be Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah. Well, he, he wasn't going to be Spider-Man. He, yes, was he, buying, was. he was buying for a spot to play Miles Morales. Before they did the Amazing Spider-Man, which, which by the way, they Andrew are Garfield. making Miles Morales. Well, they're uh, doing an animated version, yeah. and then Donald Glover is going to be the voice but, of Miles Morales. But it's interesting uh. to have him in the film without spoiler-free because that kind of sets up Miles Morales in a way. It really does. It, he does refer to uh, that scene his where nephew, his nephew. So yeah. everybody knows his nephew is going to be yeah. Miles I know. Morales. I know. I know. It's a bit of a spoiler, but it's like a deep, yeah, deep, it's, deep. It's like, like if, yeah. If you didn't like, if you don't know what's going on, you're just going to see him as a. As a guy that's in the film, yeah, like, but but in I fact see. he's playing, you know, the spoiler. <laughs> sorry, Dan. Dan. Sorry, Dan. Dan. I'm sorry. Is, it, is it a spoiler for spoiling no, it? it? Is, for it, being the know. spoiler? I I mean, listen. It, nobody in the movie references except for him saying that he's got a nephew. That's it's just, it. It's just like a fun Easter egg. Type it of really is. Yeah, it's a really okay. deep dive one. But yeah, I thought he was great. I loved that he was in there, and I loved the again the thing that was spoiled in the stupid fucking trailer is that that speech he gives like you need to get really good at this part because i think that's really what peter parker needed to hear well let's go ahead and talk about um spider-man and his entrance or his new foundation in the marvel cinematic universe what do you guys think about like having iron man involved in the movie and everything else easter egged into the mcu i i really didn't think he was involved like he was involved but I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys. He was only in the movie for like a mm. grand total of like ten minutes, and at got most. paid like twenty billion dollars, yeah. no doubt. So I didn't, I didn't <laughs> feel like like to me, Iron Man was just like a like like yeah. a really low co-star. It yeah. was the movie was about 
uh, Spider Man and Peter Parker. Like that. That was it. Yeah. But, but they have events of MCU surrounding the movie. So how do you feel? Like did that was that awkward? That was that weird? Or did it fit in perfectly? No, it just fits because of all, everything we've been watching lately. Anything you anything we watch Marvel now is is connected in one way, shape, or form. Yeah. Whether it be through reference or through the actual. Uh, events like um, mm-hmm. so so it, it I it felt normal to me like oh okay yeah like. and I, I agree uh, I mean yes it's in the world of but what I really uh, enjoyed about it was that the Marvel Cinematic Universe was secondary to his story and that was much better than you know again Doctor Strange where it's like world and destruction and this and that it wasn't even about that in this film and again that's the kind of personal film we've been want- I've been wanting from Marvel for a while because it's always doom and gloom and you're like no dude just make it about the guy that's it's totally fine and, and again Mar- Wonder Woman did the exact same thing it focused on her story and that was it was it world ending not really it was just about her so in in the sense that there was World War ending it, you, yes yes but spoiler dude come I'm on Wonder Woman. Dan, you got to follow your own rules Dan. yeah come on <laughs> well anyways so so there it's really funny because tom holland said that he was in fact the character the little boy in iron man 2 no iron man 2 or 3 iron man 2 so there was a, a sequence in iron man 2 where uh the doom bots are trying to ki- not they're not doom bots but you know, with the hammer bots the hammer bots are trying to kill the people in the the you know that Race car, please? No. Wait. Wait, at the very end of the film. Where, oh, where, I see. Yeah, yeah. And there's a little boy who's holding that, the, the thing. Tom that, Holland said that he's that boy and that possibly Ben was killed. Uncle Ben was killed in that. So that it kind of. That's not confirmed, though. It's not confirmed. That's complete rumor. But let's also, you know, Kevin Feige said it could have happened. So I think that's interesting. I think that it's interesting that they integrated into, into the MCU. I, I agree with Rigo that. You know, Tony Stark was overplayed at uh, incredibly in the trailer, in the posters, in everything, and he was barely in it for ten minutes. Some somebody went as far as to say it was Iron Man four. I was like, what movie were you watching? It was not. Iron it Man was 4. Jesus. He's, he's only in there for like ten minutes. Yeah, and even at that, like it's just background, like it's background character stuff that you have seen in other films. So there's no real, there's no real story for him in this, except for one little bit in the very end, which is spoiler. But even so, it's just not his movie, and people made a big deal out of it. Well, no, I felt like it was nice to have him in there, though, because it, it is a connecting universe, and he's the connected tissue that started the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so it's like a nice symbolism. Yeah, but you the know guy what, who started it yeah. is passing on to the new generation sure, of sure, sure. Marvel what, what, The person I thought that, that actually was cooler in this film was Captain America. Oh, because yeah, yeah, Captain America funny. is sprinkled which, throughout this film in the best and funniest way. Which, is, which you see in the trailer, like him talking about fitness and whatnot. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> very, it's, a, it's a very funny run-on joke. <laughs> it's, it, it, really is. Yeah, yeah. it is a very run-on joke. I love the great. scene in the very beginning where he's like, and here, inspired by your PE teacher, he's pointing in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> and then the PE teacher's like, this guy might be a war criminal now, I but who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, so I think we have decided this movie is worth a dine-in. Yes. Go watch it in theaters. Definitely watch it in theaters. We are about to stop this live feed, so we could go ahead and move on to the spoilerific review. So as I'm talking, Z, you want to go ahead and head over? Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Z, for being on the spoiler <laughs> free review. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rigo, for being on the No, thank you guys for review. having me. I wasn't expecting to be thank on you. today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, us. Mike, for being on our spoiler free review. You're I'm Dan Man Munoz, so stay tuned for our spoiler f- uh, rific review when we uh, launch it on iTunes. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Goodbye. Later. <laughs>